right now. Hi there. Good morning. It is Friday, April 12th. And it is 9 a.m. Thank you for joining us again. I'm so glad to be here. This is the last show before the weekend, and I get back to my normal normal schedule. schedule. Yes, yes. I love y'all, but thanks, I like to sleep. Thanks for helping <laughs> fill in for of Steph course, this week. Yes. Yeah. So Stephanie is a lucky lady. She gets to hang out with all you wonderful guys all the time. That is so sweet. Yeah. That is so sweet. <laughs> she also means that about you too, Justin. Awesome. Thank you. I like <laughs> buttering us up a little bit. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll miss you, Erica. Well, and, uh, we'll I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving. Well, that's true. Not, you'll see me that's at my true. desk. <laughs> see you around. This room. Uh, we'll give you some humidity as a parting gift, too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this weekend, it's going to start getting more sticky out there as uh, humidity starts to shift in. But we've had a nice morning this morning. Temperatures have been in the 50s and 60s. Let me take you outside. 64 at the airport, 63 in New Braunfels, 62 in Seguin. Still some 50s for Bernie and Kerrville, some of the cooler spots this morning, but everyone's going to warm up. Yesterday afternoon was pretty warm. We'll be right back there again today. 75 noon time. We'll take it up to 83 by 5 o'clock. We do start to increase the cloud cover a little bit. Some high clouds will be streaming in late in the day. And also notice that it'll be breezy. Southeast Julie winds 10 to 15, and they may be gusty from time to time. 76 at 8 o'clock, 73 at 9 p.m. Good for any evening plans you may have on this Friday. And let's look at some of the weather headlines. Yes, humidity, it's coming back soon, sooner rather than later. That may result in some fog by tomorrow morning and Sunday morning, too. Then, what about Fiesta? We're looking way ahead. There is a chance for rain next Thursday. We'll discuss that. Plus, today is an important anniversary, an F5 tornado that came through South Texas. We'll discuss here in just a few minutes. Let's get over to RJ now and check in on that morning traffic. Mm, all right, you uh, had definitely have uh, my interest, Justin, with that one. Okay, I-35 at uh at mile marker uh, 186. So we don't usually start out with uh, traffic cameras out in New Braunfels area, but we had a major crash earlier that involved a couple of vehicles. Now, fortunately, as you see right here, uh, we have traffic moving pretty smoothly there. Great job by the crews out there in New Braunfels area to clear this wreck out because it had completely kind of shut down some main lanes there at 35 South for all of our folks in New Braunfels. And look at that great view there uh, from the horizon there from our camera up there in New Braunfels area. Okay, back to San Antonio proper. I-35 northbound Nogalitos. We have a stalled vehicle causing a little bit of delays there for some more drivers coming in from 90 and of course 10 in this area if you're headed up right now from the Burbank High School area just keep in mind you might run into a stalled vehicle out there further on the northwest side we have a stalled vehicle I-10 westbound at West Avenue not causing any major delays out there in the moment for all of our folks in the Woodlawn uh, area so that's good news for our drivers there okay ongoing issues here major issues construction Fortunately, we have to talk about it. I know I sound like a broken record here. Uh, starting tonight, 9 o'clock, we are going to shut down the entire interchange 1604 and I-10, both directions, both highways. So basically, if you're coming up I-10, UTSA to La Cantera Parkway, that's going to be completely shut down both directions. If you're coming on 1604, Vance Jackson to La Cantera Parkway, that's going to be shut down both directions there. Uh, as far as it, for our drivers on I-10, you're still going to be able to take the access roads. For our drivers on 1604, you're going to have to loop around a little bit, go up to the rim, and go south south here to UTSA Boulevard, so there will be all sorts of detours and signs there in place. That's not it. We have another round of major closures taking place starting tonight through Monday morning, 5 a.m. Basically, Blanco, the exit there all the way to the bidder's entrance ramp. That's going to be shut down the westbound lanes there only of 1604, so it's going to be affecting all of our drivers on the north side, northwest side of town. So it's going to be very busy out there throughout the entire weekend. Make sure you guys stay safe and just, uh, again, plan ahead if you are headed out to the north side, northwest west side of town. Mark and Erica, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Here's today's 9 at 9. New information in a December shooting spree that started near San Antonio and ended in Austin. The suspect, Shane James Jr., had his first pretrial hearing in the case but did not appear. His attorneys asked for the hearing to be pushed back, saying this is a complicated case that will take time to bring to trial. James is facing four counts of capital murder and could face the death penalty if convicted. The pretrial hearing was reset to June 11th. An accused serial killer in the Austin area may get a plea deal. Raul Mesa was in court yesterday. He's reportedly connected to the murders of four people and suspected in at least two other deaths. The deal would have Mesa plead guilty and serve 50 years for each murder he's accused of to be served concurrently. But family members of the victims say that isn't enough. 
Congress is set to take up a bill related to our national security today. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, essentially helps the government fight against terrorism, but some members of Congress accuse the government of using it to spy on Americans and what tighter restrictions. The clock is ticking for a decision to be made, though. FISA officially expires one week from today. The nationwide drug shortage is getting worse. According to the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, more than 320 medications are now in short supply, making this the worst shortage on record. Manufacturers cited supply and demand and issues with raw materials as a few of the reasons for the shortages. The Biden administration is now urging Congress to pass a law rewarding hospitals that buy drugs from a wider variety of drug manufacturer, and the FTC is investigating drug distributors to look into whether they misuse their market power. Earnings and interest rates are on the minds of investors heading into the end of the week. First quarter earnings reports from banks like J.P. Morgan Chase and Citigroup are due out this morning. Some stocks got a big boost in trading yesterday after the producer price index measuring inflation at the wholesale level came in below expectations. The Nasdaq closed 1.7 percent higher. The S&P added 0.7 percent and the Dow closed flat. Home buyers are paying more to borrow. Freddie Mac says that the average rate for a 30 year mortgage is now up to nearly 6.9 percent, the highest in more than a month but it's still nearly one full point lower than last fall. The time to file your taxes is now. If you haven't done so already, tax day is Monday. If you need more time, you can file for an extension, but you'll still need to do that by Monday as well. That will give you until October 15th to file. The worst thing you could do is not file at all. The IRS has tools to help you navigate the filing process and tax software like TurboTax and H&R Block can help as well. Instagram is testing a new tool aimed at protecting minors from sextortion. That's when someone blackmails a user after getting them to send explicit photos of themselves. The feature is designed to automatically blur all images with nudity sent in direct messages. Instagram says the feature should soon be available worldwide. Apple is expanding its self-repair program. Customers and repair shops will soon be able to use genuine used Apple parts to fix devices rather than having to order brand new parts. It will reportedly start the fall with iPhone 15 and newer models. And that is today's 9 at 9. The countdown to Fiesta is on, and this morning the Texas Cavaliers are dropping in the barges for the River Parade coming up in just a matter of weeks. Tiffany Huertas joins us live with a behind-the-scenes look of the barges near Main Plaza and East Nueva Street in downtown. Good morning, Tiff. Good morning. Happy Friday. We're kicking off Fiesta with this awesome event. Just check it out. Hundreds of volunteers will be working to put this River Parade together. This crane here? It's going to be dropping 30 barges into the river for the Texas Cavaliers River Parade happening on April 22nd. The Texas Cavaliers was founded in 1926 and they are dedicated to raising money to support the children of South Texas. And we are joined by Tress Steves, Vice Marshal and Jonathan Deere, Parade Marshal this morning. Good morning to both of you. What an morning. exciting Good time. Morning. Tell us a little bit about this year's theme about the parade. You bet. So this year's theme is Viva America, Great American Landmarks. So we're going to be celebrating all the amazing landmarks that this country has to offer from the Statue of Liberty to uh, the Golden Gate Bridge to the Alamo right here in San Antonio. Um, we're doing that because uh, my charitable honoree for this year's parade uh, is actually the Alamo Education Center, uh, which is in fact going to be the Texas Cavaliers Education Center, something we're very, very proud of. Uh, so we're, we're just really excited getting the boats in the water and uh, we're ready, getting ready to go for April the 22nd. For people that are visiting here, Tres, tell us a little bit about the experience, the colorful floats, the colors all over the river. Well, this year it's gonna be better than ever. We have more lights, more uh, smoke, and other surprises for the 200,000 people that uh, join the banks of this river to watch our beautiful parade and the millions of people that uh, experience it through various media outlets. So we're excited. There's still a time to get the tickets here, and we're seeing all the action behind us. Tell us a little bit more of that. So uh, there's absolutely still tickets available. Uh, They're going fast, uh, and you can you can buy our tickets by going to uh, our website, which is www.texascavaliers.org, or our uh, phone number is 210-22-RIVER. 
Uh, but yes, absolutely. So, so the boats will go in today and it actually takes our decorators about a week to get the boats ready for the parade. Uh, which is an amazing thing. It's a company that comes in from New Orleans, uh, and they're they're one of the best in the world at decorating boats. Uh, and then next week we'll start putting chairs on the river and getting ready for getting ready for our guests. And before we go, we want to showcase your medal this sure, year. Absolutely. So again, it celebrates uh, Viva America and all the beautiful landmarks. Uh, you'll see some of the awesome. Uh, uh, landmarks that surround our country. The center is the Alamo, and you can see it spins, which is kind of oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and medals are available too. You can also get those on our website or uh, at the phone number that I listed. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for joining us this morning. We're going to stick around here and we'll bring you more of all of this happening on KSET. Thank you. Viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. Viva. That looks like a lot of fun out there, Tiffany. And of course, the Texas Cavaliers Parade will be on the 22nd. I'll be a part of that coverage this year uh, with the team out there. All right, and then Battle of Flowers is on the 26th, and the Fiesta Flambeau Parade is on the 27th. Don't forget to get your tickets for the KSAT Fiesta parties. We have tickets for the day and night parades. This will give you a chance to have grandstand seating, be up close to our parade broadcast, hosted by Stephanie and myself, and get a chance to meet some of us as well. So make sure to get your tickets now before we run out. Just look for the story on KSAT.com. Plus, take out your phone and scan this QR code for your chance to win the best seats in the house during the Battle of the Flowers or Fiesta Flambeau parades. One lucky winner will receive six tickets to the parade watch party with VIP passes that include private seating for the parade. They also win, oh, will also receive a $50 gift card from Ikea, but you have to be a KSET insider to win, so make sure you sign up. You have until now, until Wednesday at noon, to enter for your chance to win. Right now it is 909, 62 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. There are tons of events going on this weekend. David Sears will tell us about some of them coming up. Happening today from noon to 7, our KSAT community partners are hosting a phone bank benefiting Project MEN. The goal is to raise money for the medical mobility equipment like scooters and wheelchairs. During the phone bank, you can also ask about the Viva Mobility Resource Fair happening this Sunday in Morgan Sports Complex. Again, the phone bank is today from noon until 7 p.m. and the number to call will be released just before then. All right back outside with live cam another perfect spring day here in South Texas right now we're looking at some of the work going on down at the San Antonio River where they're got a giant cra crane in place to get those barges ready to go for this year's Fiesta parades. The countdown is on. It, Fiesta. it I is feel like it more than ever right now and a perfect day to do that. There's no wind to speak of. Nope. Uh, but in, in retrospect, uh, it is that it, a time of year we, we've seen some really rough weather around here. It's true. We're just starting to move into kind of the heart of severe weather season. And mm -hmm. we know that it's around the corner. Of course, Fiesta is going on. So we want to remind everyone that uh, we've got to be careful this time of year. And that takes us back to 1927. Uh, in 1927, on this date, Rock Springs was hit with an F5 tornado. Uh, it is still the third deadliest tornado in Texas history, just behind Waco and Goliad. And then you see the rest of the list there. But this was one that really did a lot of damage. It was a massive, massive tornado. And as we look at some of the uh, statistics here, and by the way, that's a picture from Rock Springs. Uh, just a few years ago, I talked to a survivor of that tornado. Very interesting uh, account of what happened that day but uh, sadly 74 people were killed hundreds were injured and that tornado stayed on the ground for they believe 65 miles which is pretty incredible we have a story about it online if you want to check it out that happened on this day in 1927. Uh, let's look at severe weather april is typically a pretty big month now what we're looking at here are the average severe weather reports per month in texas March, we start to see these numbers come up. April, they really take a jump, and it's May. May is the month where we typically see most of our severe weather, including here in San Antonio, and then by June, they start to come down a little bit more. But it's April and May where we start to see things really ramp up, and yes, we've got to be careful uh, as we go forward because there are going to be some storms that probably pack a punch. That includes... Monday, maybe not so much here, but across Texas as a low moves into the Lone Star State, we get humidity out ahead of it. Severe weather will be possible from north to <coughs> parts of Oklahoma as a front comes through. And then we may see a few storms here, but I think that's Tuesday morning. And typically when we get storms in the morning, they're not as strong. 
Uh, so we'll watch that. I, I think our risk of severe weather is pretty low, and I think our risk of seeing really significant rain is pretty low. But that's Tuesday morning, about a 20% chance, and that front kind of stalls out as that storm system moves east. In the meantime, we've got some really good weather out there. Another great morning underway. Temperatures are in the mid-60s here in San Antonio. Still some 50s in Bernie and Kerrville in cold winds for now because the winds will pick up a little bit later this afternoon. Temperatures will also be fairly warm. 82 to 83 for a high here in San Antonio. 84 again, 84 in Floresville. Some places pushing 90 again today down to the south and west of town. And that also presents a problem. It's going to be warm. It's going to be windy. We'll get gusts close to 35 miles per hour, especially out west along the Rio Grande. And then relative humidity will be anywhere from 13 to 20 percent. Uh, we're looking at relative humidity here. When it gets into this range, when you start seeing teens, it's very, very dry air and you get the gusty winds. And that means there's a pretty significant fire threat. Yet again, that has been the case uh, for quite a while now. But Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Brackettville, Rock Springs, all places we'll be watching uh, for the spread of any sort of fire that would develop. Hopefully that does not happen, but uh, that's the risk today. So our extended forecast, 84 tomorrow, 84 on Sunday. We'll see some fog both mornings and then a chance of a shower or storm, as we said, Monday morning. Gets pretty warm Tuesday and Wednesday, and then there's Fiesta Thursday. Looks like we'll get a front. There is a chance for some rain. Too early to put timing on that, uh, but just know that there could be a few storms around when a Fiesta officially starts. Guys. Thank you, Justin. There's a lot going on this weekend. Some fun festivals that includes a lot of food and strawberries, plus a chance to hear from some local authors. And if you really want to do some cleanup this weekend, there are places where you can dump your junk. David Sears is here with more details. David? Yeah, that's what I want to be doing this weekend when all is fun, the weather's great, a lot of things to do, and you got to stay <laughs> home and clean up a mess. You sound enthused, Dave. Yeah, I can't wait for that. <laughs> All right, let's start with the annual Poteet Strawberry Festival. This is the 77th year, so we it's a lot of strawberries. They're going to have food and music, more feud, more music, more food, more music. Remember when this was just like a little Saturday event? Now it is an extravaganza for the entire weekend. And not just food and music, but they have a whole carnival set up. It's getting started today, runs through Sunday. Tomorrow you'll really be able to eat up the fun. <clears throat> there will be a parade, and our own David Elder of Texas Eats is going to be the Grand Marshal of festival actually started back in 1948. Their main objective was to celebrate and enjoy those fresh strawberries and bring attention to farming. Got a lot of info on that on our website in the entertainment section. A little closer to home, the Festival of Food and Fun, the Taste of the South Side. This event is going to be hosted by Por Vida Academy. That is a school with a curriculum and atmosphere designed to help underserved students in that area. It's a time for food and fun family. The whole community can come together. The goal is to raise some money over the next two days to help support programs that help those students. We've had kids come from Bernie ISD, North Side, South Side, um, and they all kind of just filter in, primarily due to behavioral issues, things like that, homelessness, all sorts of reasons to label them at risk. But when you get to know them and talk to them on a social emotional level, you really realize that they have more to their story and we really take the time to kind of get to know them. Great school, do a lot of great work, looking for some funds to continue that great work. The fun starts tomorrow morning, 1145, location 1135 Mission Road. And once again, info on our website. All right, so how about just some quiet time for you? Maybe you and your kids. There's a book festival going on this weekend. Over 100 authors, not just from our area or Texas, but from across the country, are going to be here talking about their books and their passions. There are books about San Antonio, its residents, its history. There's also some history books like The True Story of a Bandito Shot in the Face by Texas Rangers. Authors writing about infrastructure, how electric co-ops got started. The festival takes place at the Central Library and the UTSA Southwest Campus. All right, so if you're looking for one of these fun things to do, <laughs> how about this one? <laughs> yeah, like this is going to be fun. So <laughs> manual labor, clean up some of those messes around your house or just get rid of some stuff. Tomorrow is free landfill day. How hold, how, household bulky items, appliances, furniture, mattresses, carpet, fencing material, water heaters and toilets, tires limited to six per household. You can take all that stuff, but no roofing material, sheet rot, dirt, brick, brush, lumber, construction materials, industrial, commercial or construction waste. You can't take that. 
You can take it to a couple of different places. Republic Services Landfill, 7000 IH10 IH East, Waste Management Landfill at 8611 Covell Road. You'll need a picture ID and a recent CPS utility bill that shows that you made payment for the environmental fee. People are highly encouraged to wear safety vests and all loads have to be covered by a tarp. So there you go. So you get a little work in, then go have some fun. There are just a few of these several events going on this weekend. I know RJ was talking about a bicycle race going on. Fiesta Fit Fest, Fiesta Fit Fest is going on this. I mean, if you can't find something to do, you ain't looking. <laughs> So you just stayed at home and cleaned up messes, I guess. Fair enough. So there you I'll go. That QR code to take it all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This big QR code right there. That'll fix you up. That'll tell you what to do. All right. Thank you, David. All right. Time now is 921, and we're looking at 64 degrees out at San Antonio International Airport. When we come back, how students at Alamo Heights Junior High are coming together to make their campus beautiful. And it's all through an event happening tomorrow. Details after the break. Welcome back, 925 Alamo Heights ISD, getting ready to host a day filled with school pride where the students and the community come together to make their campus shine bright. Tiffany Huerta sh shares how this project is making an impact on students' lives. It was a very fun experience because there were different projects all around the campus and different groups of people came and we just worked on it. While some students planted, others painted. It was just a a day where our whole community could come together and beautify our campus. And Mulch Mania is back again this year. It's a day where students at Alamo Heights Junior School work on different projects around the campus. I'm looking forward to all the help from the community. The community is invited to a day filled with activities. And we'll be moving all this mulch that is here behind me. We'll be planting plants. They will be collaborating on different projects at the event on April 13th at the school. The PTO is made up of parents and teachers, but all year we are fundraising with different events, different activities, selling merchandise, and all of that money goes to support the work we're doing here at Mulch Mania. Really the equipment and the materials you need to beautify the campus. Students will be learning leadership skills and teamwork along the way. I'm mostly looking for for basically a lot of the groups at our school to just come out here and help us out. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. You can help the students make their campus beautiful at the Mulch Mania event tomorrow. It will start at 9 a.m. and goes until 12.30 p.m. at Alamo Heights Junior School located on North New Braunfels. You're encouraged to bring a shovel, a rake, and a bag of dog food that will be donated to the Alamo Heights Animal Care Services No Kill Shelter. 926, 64 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a look at one of the several authors that will be at the San Antonio Book Festival this weekend. What San Antonio author Susan Toomey Frost hopes readers take away from her book about the occupation of Veracruz. Plus, the UTSA Roadrunners are wrapping up spring training with their spring football game tomorrow. They'll have a fiesta spin to it. David and RJ will be back to talk more about that. Nearly 100 authors are coming to the Alamo City this weekend for the 12th Annual San Antonio Book Festival. One of those authors will be local writer Susan Toomey Frost, who will be showcasing her book, Witness to War, Mexico, in the photographs of Walter E. Hotzel. Now, Frost has been collecting photographs, postcards, and images of Mexico for decades. She lived in Mexico for six years and taught English and linguistics there. She now lives in San Antonio, where she's taught at Trinity University. Frost calls both Texas and Mexico home. Her new book is about an American mining engineer turned photographer. Walter E. Hutzel lived in, in Mexico for 10 years and was there when the United States occupied the Mexican port of Veracruz in 1914. Hutzel's images are the very first ones taken during that time and are showcased throughout the book. Frost wants people to learn from the images and get a sense of what it was like during that time. The book kind of shows how we, the United States, has not always been the best friend to Mexico. <laughs> and that maybe we should go by this example and not meddle in the affairs of Mexico like we have done so much over the years. That uh, we are one people and especially in San Antonio, I feel this, that 
We share mutual heritage. You can hear from Frost at the San Antonio Book Festival tomorrow at Central Library and UTSA Southwest Campus. The free event is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, visit the KSAT community page on KSAT.com. Taking a look now at LiCam, it is a beautiful start to the day, clear skies, but it is a little chilly this morning, but it's expected to warm up, right, Justin? Yeah, I don't think anyone's complaining, though. It felt, <laughs> it felt great, and these days are fleeting, right? They're uh, quickly going away, so we're going to enjoy them. Uh, humidity starts to come back in this weekend, so know that these warnings will not be like this uh, over the next several days. Want to show you a picture on KSAT Connect? We're getting fiesta ready around here. This is Alberto. Uh, he is fiesta ready. That's uh, that's a great shot. Love the colors. It just uh, you know it gets you in a vibe. It gets you. It's it's a vibe fiesta, and we're we're getting there very quickly. We're excited, and we appreciate the pictures. Send us your fiesta pictures. You guys did such a great job yesterday with the pet pics. Let's uh, switch it over to fiesta now. We'll. Uh, Take all those in. Hey, uh, David mentioned this earlier. For heading over to the Poteet Strawberry Festival, here's the forecast for you. Noontime, 77. We're talking tomorrow, by the way. It is going to be warm and humid by the afternoon. Make sure you take some sunscreen with you because it's that time of year. And then partly cloudy by this evening, or Saturday evening, I should say, 78. Not bad, just a little warm and humid, uh, certainly by the afternoon. And as we look at the forecast for today, noontime 75, we'll take our uh, temperatures up to around 83 by 5 o'clock, partly cloudy. And yes, it will get a little bit breezy, especially by the evening with some gusts 25 to 30 miles per hour. And you know, Erica mentioned to me that we have another anniversary today we've got to talk about. Some hail. You might remember this one back in 2016. We're going to discuss a little more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Earlier in the show, David Sears was telling us about some of the events going on this weekend, and one of those he did not mention was the UTSA football Fiesta Spring Game. That's because he's waiting to speak with a special guest. So David and RJ join us again to talk about the game tomorrow and some other games going on. Yeah, big weekend sports-wise mm -hmm. as well. I mean, yeah. a lot of stuff going on all over all over San Antonio. And we, we left this one out earlier because this is like an event among itself. This is just <laughs> this is just a huge event. A lot of questions need to be answered, and a lot of fun is going to be had. Brad Smith, the Deputy Athletic Director for External Affairs at UTSA Athletics, now joining us. How's it going, Brad? How's it going, Brad? You know what? Even though it's spring, it's always a good time to talk about football. So first of all, Brad, for all of the UTSA supporters, fans out there, just give us a little bit of idea of what we're going to see out there at the spring game tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for having us. We're Fiesta ready, right? We've got our Fiesta <laughs> flag uh, for the uh, official Fiesta spring football game this Saturday. It's at 2 p.m in the dome where it's always 72 degrees inside the dome right <laughs> but uh it's free admissions free doors open at 1 p.m we're looking to really pack the dome and we got a lot of exciting events going inside the dome uh, in addition to the football game uh fans when they come through the doors they'll be able to pick up their free uh, 2024 football posters uh scheduled magnets and we also have yard signs this year we want everybody to pick up yard signs put them in their in their homes and their yards and around uh the city of san antonio and in businesses there um, we're also since it is an official fiesta event we also want to we'll be recognizing the official fiesta commissioners there and also miss fiesta sierra davila and we'll also if you guys have heard as well uh, we have a new men's basketball coach mm -hmm. so he will also be there at the game we'll recognize him on the field at halftime and then we'll also have free autographs post game so fans can meet the new players at uh, with utsa athletics and football team is, is there a game tomorrow so i like got a lot of stuff going on like i know other than but a lot of events going on but there is a game right so which what's really cool about uh uh, UTSA football the past couple of years, and it's a testament to Coach Trailer and, and the players. You know, the home record is 18 and two over the last three Ooh, years. So I'm nice. uh, really excited yeah. about what's coming up for 2024, and uh, really excited to see all our fans out there at the dome. You mentioned all the new players. Of course, there's a lot, lot of, lot of turnover. It seems like this year for the team. So, what can the fans expect from this team this year? I know it's early. The spring break game is tomorrow. They still got their fall workouts coming. But I mean, no Frank Harris. Some of these other guys are missing. 
Madison. Yeah. So, so it's going to be a little different. What can the fans expect from the team this year, you think? Yeah, a little different. I think you'll still see the fun and gun, you know, uh, offense that Coach Trailer has there. Of course, he'll be able to talk a bit more about it than I can. But um, but, but I think we'll, we've got 51 returning players, which is going to be amazing. I think we've got another good run ahead of us and the, in the second year in the American Conference. So really looking forward to 2024. Our home opener this year is August 31st. Go ahead and circle that on your calendars. It'll be an orange out, so we're looking really forward for everybody coming out. Make sure you buy your season tickets. They start at 90 bucks. You can go to go utsa.com and buy those and help us back the dome. Yeah, Brad, you mentioned, you mentioned Austin Clanch there, the new uh, basketball coach for the men's team there, UTSA, getting already integrated in the community. Last year, we saw Coach Trailer. He was the grand marshal for the Battle of Flowers. So just talk about uh, just getting the guys out there in the community, getting them integrated, plus just the movement that Coach Trailer has done over these past couple of years to really put UTSA on the map. Yeah, absolutely. You know, part of our strategic plan this year is really to unite the community, right, and maximize some partnerships within the community and our head coaches from all of our sports, not only football with Coach Trailer, but with men's basketball coach, Coach Clanch, um, um, our coach um, Karen with women's basketball as well. They're fully ingrained and entrenched in the community. And, you know, without our coaches being out there and engaging new fans and, and our alumni within the community, it'd be hard for us to get fans out to the games, right? So continue to build those relationships within the community would be something that we're looking really forward to do that. And, of course, they're out there shaking hands and making sure that they're spreading the word about their sports too. So it's very important for us to put that olive branch out there to reach out to the community. And you'll hear more about some other things and pretty cool initiatives that we got coming up um, for the upcoming football season and basketball seasons as well. I don't think there's too many other Division One schools in the country can say they're an official event, their spring game, for one of the big par biggest parties a city hosts every year. So I think that's a great accomplishment for you guys. And, and of course, being a member of the Fiesta family yes. is, is awesome for this team. So, so congratulations on that. Way to go. And uh, Brad, real quick, this is going to be your first Fiesta, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I saw your first Fiesta. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Here we go. Yeah, we're ready Whoa. to go. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be fully ingrained. So we're going to be at Hotel Contessa down the river wall. Ooh. We're going to take advantage of everything that comes with that. But we got our flag ready. Yep. There you we'll go. see you guys out there on Saturday. Don't eat the rest of the week because you'll, be, you'll fill yourself up for the week of Fiesta. Just, pace yourself. Yeah, get ready. <laughs> you, sure. Yeah, you will have to pace yourself. Huh? Thanks, Brad. See you Saturday. Thank you guys Appreciate very much. Appreciate Thanks, you. Brad. Birds up. All right, a lot else going on this weekend. Look at this. Speaking the Brahmas are playing. Yes. They're playing in the Dome. So there you go on Sunday. So that's the St. Louis Battle Hawks. The Battle Hawks Brahmas matchup we've all been looking for. You know what, David? Brahmas 2 0. They had yeah. a pretty good comeback last week uh, in this game here, 2 o'clock at the Dome. It's going to be on case at 12. So uh, Brahmas getting a little bit of momentum. They were like down 19 the nothing in the fourth quarter. Yeah, like and then they did that weird sort of onside conversion yeah. thing. And so all I know is we're 2 0, Brahmas. <laughs> And the Spurs only have two games left in the regular oh, season boy. tonight. It's the Nuggets. Think about the Nuggets. The Nuggets are still battling for that first first place spot in the West. So yeah. they may not, you know, take it easy on the Spurs tonight. And then the Spurs host the Pist or yeah, host the Pistons mm -hmm. on on Sunday. Now another weird thing about this one: the Pistons don't care. Yep. They got 13 wins. They're 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 in that bottom three. The Spurs do Charlotte. Let's see, just Charlotte for the for instance plays Boston. And they play Cleveland, both in the top six on the East. So this is going to get weird for the Spurs to see if they can stay in that yeah. bottom three. So and and we'll you know see. what, David? No Wemby on the injury report right now. Yeah, so, so wait yeah. to see as we get closer to tip-off time whether Victor Romanyama does play again. But again, Spurs wrapping things up here uh, at home. That, that'll be an interesting game to see who shows up <laughs> yeah, for that uh, exactly. home game on, uh, yeah, against yeah. the Pistons. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so we'll talk about that on Monday. Well, okay. Remember, May 12th yeah. is the day you want to circle. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Along right. with August 31st for the season <laughs> opener for UTSA. Days. But May 12th, <laughs> circle that one first. All right, guys. Remember what that you. is? Do y'all remember what May 12th is? Why? <laughs> Erica's like, oh my I'm, God. I didn't mean to stump you, Erica. You haven't been here for a while, so. It's lottery time. day. Oh. It's when the Spurs find okay, out Jeff, where they are yeah, in the lottery. Okay. So, okay. 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 You got it. Sure. Right, guys, thank you. Guys. Have a good weekend. 941, 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We are getting you ready for Fiesta, and we mentioned our Battle of Flowers Insider Contest earlier in the show, a chance to win the best seat in the house for the parade. Well, when we come back, we'll hear from the mayor and different Fiesta royalties about what they love about the day parade.
KSAT is doing it again. We're teaming up with the Battle of Flowers Association to give you a chance to ride in your very own float in the Battle of Flowers Parade. All right, Mayor, I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because... I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because it is both a celebration of our history and heritage, but also a party like no other on the face of the earth. Miss Queen of Soul here. All right, London, I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because... I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because of the crowd. I can't wait to see what you guys are wearing. So I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because to me it means history, family, and fun. I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because it's what started Fiesta. I am here with Michael Quintanilla, the Fiesta Flambeau Grand Marshal. We've got our lovely hats on. All right, Michael, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because... Okay. I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because I love parades. I am here with Natalie Gomez. Gomez Law, the official law firm of Fiesta. All right, Natalie. I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because... Oh my goodness, I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because women are in charge and they're running the world and doing a great job at it. All right, Mike. I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because... Oh, Mike, that's so sweet. Oh, yes. Mike, you can't say that on TV, Mike. So, you get the idea. Just go to KSAT.com to become a KSAT Insider, if you aren't already. And tell us why you love the Battle of Flowers Parade. And you can win a chance to ride your very own float on Parade Day. Viva Fiesta! Viva! Yeah, that's all fine and dan dandy, David, but uh, Dame La Crown. Oh. Oh, David, David, <laughs> David Hurtado from KSAT. All right, thank you, David. Uh, let's get out your phone right now. Scan this QR code. It'll take you to our website where you can sign up for the Battle of Flowers contest where you could win a chance to ride in the parade itself. You have until tomorrow at midnight to enter for a chance to win. To enter the contest, you have to answer the prompt, I love the Battle of Flowers Parade because in 15 words or less, the QR code will take you to the entry form. A winner will be chosen either on Sunday or Monday. All right, since we're rolling out Fiesta today and really get into it this next week, let's talk Fiesta medals because it's the one question we always get this time of year. We had a KSAT Fiesta medal giveaway this morning, but we have two more today, each one with different medals. David Elder will be out at Jordan Ford this afternoon hanging out with the Texas Eats medals. Uh, it'll be located off of 35 near Topper Wine. You can start lining up for those medals at noon. And then later in the day, Adam Kasky will be handing out his medals at Seguin Chevy. You can start lining up for those at 4 p.m. The address is right there on your screen, and he'll be live during our later newscast. Now, this is just the beginning of our different medal giveaways, so make sure to tune in each day to find out when the next one is going to be. Start collecting those medals. You collect your medals, Justin? I do. I haven't got an Adam Kasky one yet. Uh-oh. It's Kasky Clips. So it's, it's a play off the eclipse, which yeah. is pretty cool. There you cool. go. Yay. Yeah. But I need a David Elder and a Caskey. we got to collect all of the case at once. I uh, get all of them. <laughs> all of them. So we hope you'll uh, head out there this afternoon and get uh, one of your own. You brought up a very good point earlier. Uh, this is also the anniversary of the big hailstorm. You remember yeah. that in 2016? Oh, it was yeah. April 12th in 2016 that we had the big hailstorm come across San Antonio. This was prolific, okay, because it's still one of the costliest hailstorms, not only in Texas, but in the country. Uh, I came right through a populated area here in San Antonio, and you can see where it got up to softball size a couple times up around Holotus, and then as it came through the Kirby area, but it was, it was largely all the way through. Anywhere in this path, you probably saw some damage. And uh, yeah, right there around Holotus, that was uh, an area that hit, got hit really hard. And then right around Kirby and Alamo Heights is where we saw some very sizable hail uh, that came through. And total cost, $1.36 billion, a second costliest hailstorm in Texas history. Uh, again, that's been eight years now, hard to believe. Uh, and there's some of the pictures of some of the damage, windows busted, cars damaged. Uh, softball size hail yeah, will do that. Uh, just a very, very costly storm and roofs 
had to be replaced for years after that storm. So there you go. Look back. Very busy day. But again, it goes to show you that we are headed into severe weather season. And this is when things start to really pick up. 64 right now. Dew point is at 50. Calm winds. And as we look at the satellite picture, not a lot to see. But if you look here on the bottom of your screen, it's very faint. But we do have some high clouds starting to stream in. We'll see a bit more of those during the afternoon. Not a big deal. Uh, it'll still uh, be fairly sunny today in temperatures right now 64 in San Antonio 59 Kerrville 66 in Rock Springs 70 in Del Rio right around the mid 60s here in San Antonio at this hour. Do want to let you know the winds are going to start to pick up. We're not seeing a lot right now, but by the afternoon you'll start to see these winds get fairly gusty. It's not going to be an overly windy day, but breezy is what we'll call it. Gusts up to 25 miles per hour, especially as we get into tonight with those southeasterly winds picking up. But the winds will be significantly gustier out west, 15 to 25 gusts to 35 for our western counties. And what I've got labeled here is the relative humidity. And when you get the relative humidity below 20 percent, that's when fires can often spread easily and it's been a while since we've got some good rain out west. So there are red flag warnings posted for our western counties. That includes places like Uvalde, Brackettville, Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Fires can spread very easily. So uh, be careful out there if uh, uh, don't do any outdoor burning or anything like that as we uh, typically say. All right, let's talk about the weekend. 84 Saturday, uh, 84 on Sunday. We'll see some fog both days uh, briefly in the morning, but uh, not a big deal. All in all, the weekend looks pretty good. There is a chance for some showers early on Monday. Weak front comes through. Uh, this window is pretty small. And then it turns partly cloudy and warm Tuesday and Wednesday near 90. But then we're going to be watching a front on Thursday. The timing is going to be important here uh, because it could bring some showers and storms with it for the start of Fiesta. We hope not, but we'd like we the cooler not. temperatures. We do. A front would be good, and if we could, you know, schedule the rain around events and then get some cooler weather for the start of Fiesta, that would not be a bad thing. So as we get a little bit closer, we'll start to time things out for you. All we'll right. Check in with y'all later that Thank week. Thank you, Justin. 952, 67 degrees. It's always a great day to go to the zoo. Today is a zoo local day. Bear County residents can get into the zoo for just $8. Here is a look at our zoo cam right now. And is that where the flamingos were? Crane exhibit. Oh, this is mm -hmm. the cranes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. Nice shady spot yeah. in the water right there at that part of the zoo. A reminder, our KSAT community partners are hosting a phone bank benefiting Project Men today from noon to 7. The goal of the phone bank to raise money for medical mobility equipment like scooters and wheelchairs. The number to call will be released just before noon. And during the phone bank, you can also ask about the Viva Mobility Resource Fair happening this Sunday at Morgan Sports Complex. Erica, thank you. It was fun. It's been nice having you the last couple days. Day. You what? I'll have to come back one day. Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> have a great weekend, everybody.